it is how we doing it, man. The we want the smoke weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to my brother Stephen Jackson. Uh, he's somewhere chilling right now, blasting Bum B or eating a Trill Burger. But before we even <laughs> fucking get it cracking, we gotta smoke some good shit up here, right, Marcus? Of course, of course. You know, I we got a you got a real professional smoker coming through today, huh? <laughs> yeah, so you know? I like it. A real journeyman, you know, he's probably smoked <laughs> everywhere, just like he played in every team. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How many bloods you think he smoked if he played in all these teams? If it's the Golden State era, maybe like 10 a day. Matt Bars, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what up, Matt? What's up, fellas? Appreciate wild, y'all having wild, me. Wow, intro. I'm sorry, man. No, all good. What are you smoking right now that, that you need to put out there that's good? Man, just any seven leaves right now. I think I'm on, um, what am I on, our blue slush right now? Blue no, slush? Blue slush, yeah. Wow, that's some new shit right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It goes yeah. right violating already. Damn. Oh, crazy. Is it like with Keith and all that craziness? No, or? I don't do all I mean, to me, I feel like you need to do all that. You're not smoking good weed. So I'd rather just smoke good weed than put all the extra bullshit on top of it, to be honest with you. I mean, coming from the era where it was a little bit more natural, now it's just like all DNA'd yeah, out it's, and it's, combined. It's an art now. And I, I, I'm to the era of, you know, I started with Kush and Perp like everybody else. And, you know, I like that 20 to 26 28 range i feel like anything higher than that so I don't 38 even, is i'm, r- t- I'm too old to be smoking that. 38 38 is gonna make me go to sleep <laughs> I don't, so, need, I don't need no I don't need no that shit yesterday He gave me like the 36s Yeah I was See, like that's To me I think and, and, and I say this with all due respect I think people that are really hype On those high TAC levels Are people that kind of Started smoking later If you've oh, been smoking okay. For a long time You kind of know what you like And you know what's going on And you know you, you talk to someone like Snoop I guarantee he don't smoke that Anything above 32, 33, 34. Mm. I mean, all that, all that 40. I've seen 50. I've seen 60. Nah. Just like, this there is a 60 too. out there? Yeah. He was, that claiming, high? he was claiming it. So I, I didn't smoke it. I said, congratulations for that. <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't for me. What, what do you smoke when you're with Snoop? Like, <sighs> does he make you conform to. No, I mean, I mean, no, you know, back in the day, it was it, the, the best pastime was to pass a plastic of blunt around, but those days are long gone. So normally mm. you just. Why you make that face? Y'all still passing blunts? Oh, he does. I mean, no, I do. I mean, what? Who'd you pass the ball with just recently? I mean, no, it was a long. It was like four years ago with Magic Johnson. I mean, Magic Smokes. Yeah, I mean, we gave it him. I, uh-huh. mean, I didn't. We didn't. I mean, did yeah. he get it back? I don't. I don't recall. Um. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, normally, you know. <laughs> also, imagine the other day, you know, you know, everybody smokes, man. I guess I it, was, it. it was more like you know, even Stephen Jack, he told me that it was more like uh, socially accepted now. It, I mean, back then, uh, I guess the testers was cool with y'all, but y'all needed it to relax your muscles. Yeah, I mean, it's we needed it for a lot of different things. Um, Stress and they really, Yeah, they didn't really get cool with it really till we were done, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, we, myself and Al Harrington, you know, we were when we retired, we was pushing the line, going out to New York and talking to the NBPA and the NBA, just really about studying the plant because they push all these opioids on us and, and will pump us full of anything that, that is masking one thing and causing long-term effects, but then wanted to suspend us, fine us, or some people even lost their career mm. over smoking weed. So, um, you know, I'm happy to say now, you know, I, I think starting with the bubble, they stopped testing in the bubble, and then from there on, they kind of stopped testing overall. So, you know, luckily now, I just don't think the NBA promotes, like, hey, we smoke weed or go smoke weed, because obviously it's a family thing and kids are watching, but yeah, of course. they just don't test for it anymore, which is, you know, was always our goal. Were you like furious when Dennis Rodman was like doing what he wanted and everybody no. knew what he was wanting, especially when the the whole Jordan uh, documentary came out? You saw what he was doing. I'm no. sure you knew or heard. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, to me, I don't give a fuck what no one does if, as mm-hmm. long as they're performing on the court. You okay. know what I mean? What people do off the court is not my business. Um, to me, I was just always someone. You know, you got you got to bring in. With, God damn, Ray. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think it's, uh, you know, again, to each his own, what, 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 what they kind of do off the court. You know, I just, you, mm. I was to the tone is you got to be ready when we get on the court. That's it. Well, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, we don't care what they do, but, you know, uh, it's it's all about, like, damn, he could get away with it, and they're testing us, they're watching us, and he, and uh. it, you know, the status of, like, him being an important player. I, I think it was less him and more kind of other sports as far as steroids. You know, there was steroid mm-hmm. issues in football oh, wow. and baseball, and there wasn't really a steroid issue in basketball, but they figured, you know, 75% black, what are they doing? Stereotype, <laughs> they're probably smoking, so let's start. Because when I first came in the what? league in 03, 
Um, it was just one preseason test. Everyone lined up for the preseason test, and everyone had blunts in the car waiting as soon as they got that first <laughs> test to start rocking. And then, you know, 05, 06, I want to say maybe, they started changing it to three or four random tests a year. That's wild. Wow. Holy yeah. shit, man. We want the smoke today, man. We gotta have Matt everything today, man. Yeah. Music, what's going on, current? Yeah. How's the pod life, uh, podcast life, man? Pod life is good, man. We were able to turn the show into a production company. Mm. You know what I mean? So we have, um, you know, a lot of talent under our umbrella now, from Paul Pierce to Demarcus Cousins to Rajon Rondo, Rachel Nichols, uh, in talks with Isaiah Thomas and a couple other people, but also crossing over in other lanes: football, uh, combat sports, to boxing. Um, you name it, we're you know we're, we're coming for the crown. So, you know, all the smoke productions started January first, twenty twenty four, and we already put out five shows Q one, and all of them are doing well. So we're just continuing to look to build off that. Was it like a hustle in the beginning, like <sighs> to get into all the pods out there? Because I know yeah. Steve was like, "Yo, we gotta make some money." Or was it you that was saying we gotta make some money? No, nah, it was who pushed it. It was really, uh, you know, we were both right. Jack retired maybe a year or two before I did. And okay, we were just both doing ESPN Fox and 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 doing a good job at it. And I was just like, you know, we got to figure out something we can do by you know together and we was at my house in the bay smoking watching the game one time and i said let's do a podcast he's like uh, he's like what's a podcast I was like i don't know but i know we can smoke and drink <laughs> and that's all i had to tell him he was in after that man you know i'm normally kind of more the business mind and business acumen that's all so i was saying yeah, yeah i went out and hunted it down and mm. you know luck of the draw um ended up speaking on a demarcus cousins documentary that showtime was doing and the producer after the show told me that uh, Showtime starting show basketball and I should talk to his homeboy and they they flew out from New York I cold pitched him the idea funny story at the beginning they didn't want Jack oh wow they didn't want Jack they just wanted me he was kind of gangster yeah right? gangster they, they, they the just they, they didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel they didn't yeah. know his personality they didn't know him and they're just like okay and they we kept talking and they're just like okay well now you and I'm just like well yeah there's no just me if it's not us I'm not doing it that's um, crazy so you know we kind of stood there for a second and probably they were going back and forth and they finally said okay we'll give it a shot and then you know first year out the gates we come out and win sports podcast of the year so they they, they Fire, understood man. what we had finally on that, by appreciate the way. it mm -hmm. uh, it's funny i was i was a fan since when you guys first started and i noticed how you guys smoked in the beginning mm -hmm. and then it was like a few sponsors or a certain deal you guys signed where you didn't no so what happened was mm -hmm. We started all the smoke, so that's what we're thinking. <laughs> we're going to smoke. Right, that's the and title then, right there. <laughs> and then obviously being with yeah. Showtime and their legal department, it's a little different than what we think. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. not just like starting a show on your own and going out there and hustling. We were with the actual, you know, a major network. Yeah. So corporate was a little tight on it, and I think the guest that broke it open was Snoop. Because I just said, regardless, we're going to smoke with Snoop, and Snoop's oh, going to smoke on wow. the show regardless. So he smoked, we smoked, and great ratings of yeah. millions of views and yeah. from there we were off so after that it was kind of more strategically like who do we smoke we couldn't we were obviously going to smoke with any current players yeah. but we would smoke with retired players mm -hmm. um you know rappers yeah. um actors that wanted to smoke but you know we kind of just strategically here and there would do it hey guys i've tried a lot of hot chicken places in la and honestly red chicks has the best chicken out of all of them their tenders are crunchy juicy with so much flavor and there's nothing like anything you've ever had before nothing i'm telling you my favorite item on their menu is the honey butter sandwich you know shout out to all the chicks out there they love that i don't know what it is about the honey butter sandwich but they love that but stop by their culver city location today and grab one for yourself like i did oh my god you can thank me later Mmm, you know what I'm about to do with this? It's crunchy. Mmm. <laughs> I was frustrated as a fan. I'm like, yo, I tuned in because they smoking and right. they stopped. Yeah. And I think it was like the Baron Term episode. I'm like... <laughs> I know they smoking on this one. I'm yeah. like, oh, they didn't smoke. We smoke before and after. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got it. That Got was it. Thing, like <laughs> that was the one thing that I was really big on is is having the environment. Yeah. You know what I mean? To to, to come down. We always have food cooked. You know, we always have food going. Like you guys got drink, music, yeah. hang out, yeah. kick it and talk, smoke before saying. we even go on set. And if yeah. you want to, 
you know, we could smoke on camera, but like I said, be strategic. I remember one person, like Ron Artest, he got too high before the interview, and he <laughs> oh, kept smoking. Like, bro, no. you sure? Like, we got to talk on film still. You know what I mean? And he was he was burnt on that interview. But funny as a motherfucker, told the story how he overslept and missed the next draft pick and all kinds of. He was had his his not own, middle world his his, his own <laughs> Nick uniform underneath his uh, suit because that's how sure he was the Knicks were gonna draft him and they drafted someone else and he went to Chicago the next pick. So he was telling some dope stories, but he was blowed. All because of y'all. Yeah. Why are they so scared of him? Like like every time we have an event and I and I bring his name up and people be like. What? I just think you're scared of you what you don't understand. Yeah, you okay. know what I mean. Obviously, reputation is reality these days. So he, you know, he he got into some shit like you know, like some of us got into. And I just think if you don't take the time to get to know certain people, you never know how good of a person or a bad of a person he is. But uh, you know, ever since I got a chance to know Ron and play with them, play against them, friends after, uh, great dude. We want the smoke, man. Jalen Green. I mean, it, it, has this thing been going on? I mean, we, we need to get this out of the way. I date, like, young chicks, like, 25 and up, right? Uh-huh. I'm single now, whatever. Mm-hmm. Or whatever I am right now. Uh-huh. But I think it's normal for, like, uh, why is it normal for a guy to date somebody that's 25? But it's, it's just reversed. And then I'm not mad uh, at any of it, to be honest that's with what you. I'm saying. Like, I mean, the, you know, they, you saw Dre and she, she she's, you know, Dre is bad. And, and then you saw See, Joy. I said that the other you day. You saw, uh, I think Joy is t- uh, pregnant with Trayvon Diggs yeah, I just seen Joey that Chavis. just the other day and mm-hmm. I mean these are I'm not mad you know what I mean when I was younger I used to look for older women you know what I mean so I'm not even mad at the move I mean some people are calling it gold dig this and gold dig that and you could have other baby daddies doing whatever but I mean everybody learns at their own pace and you got to bump your head to understand you know mm-hmm. what I mean so you just hope these young dudes get into these situations with these pros these women that are pros and just kind of understand what you're in for man make sure you protect yourself I mean, you know, we. I mean, Lala was with. I mean, that 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 was like one of the ones we used to talk about back in the days. But look, uh-huh. they, they have kids, long mm-hmm. marriage. I mean, obviously they're not together now, but yeah. but it was normal. Yeah, I mean, it, it, to me, like I said, I mean, to each his own. I mean, I remember as a as a young dude, I was looking for the older bad ones. Mm. You know what I mean? And if I ran across them, you know, we would see what happened. But you know, I just think there's just so much attention now on what everyone has going on and what these older women are doing and younger. But <laughs> like, I don't really give a shit about any of that. Like I said, just <laughs> when I say protect yourself. Too, to me it's not I'm not yeah. talking nothing about sex I'm just talking about protect yourself because it's a cold game it's a business now yeah. for some of these women you yeah. know the next 18 years whether you're together or not that bread is coming out every month you know what I mean so that I just mean by protect yourself from you know that way if you get married make sure you got the prenup and everything that comes with that but it's a real business for women out here and you gotta you know you gotta play it accordingly do they teach that in the NBA I hope so <laughs> <laughs> no, I seriously, so. like no, when I they go so. to the draft camp and all that. Do they? I mean, they have guys that come in and talk. I'm not sure what they're talking. They used to be talking about bullshit back when we were there. That's why no one paid attention. But I'm hoping now. I think they're just a little bit more hip to what's going on, and they have younger, more relatable people coming in and talking to these kids and and, mm. and, and trying to break game down to them. But you know, you can say whatever you want to someone until they're ready to listen. You know mm. what I mean? So at the, uh, on the flip side, these guys got to be ready to listen before the game is give, being given to them. Mm. Now, let's make it clear. I mean, with the draft, you know they got them. Chicks. That's, that's that's vulturing during the draft, the, like the future money makers. And uh, the I mean, yeah, I mean, sports. everyone. Yeah, I mean, uh, they are women out there that's doing that. Oh yeah, yeah. So we we need to make that clear. We're oh, not yeah. stupid to that shit. No, you know I mean, the, they're they're doing the women are doing their homework because it, it, I, I feel like and not just with these you know two situations we just met, but I'm the last. But eight I think to 10 I, years. I, I think the young the young players that's 17, 18 going in the league, they got to be aware of that too, man. Yeah. They're young, and then the the female is like a star, or they get caught up with the groupy shit. But or, at the same time, I mean, yeah. as a young kid, that's what you're looking for. You're not okay. looking necessarily for the trouble, but you're looking for the bad. Where the bad bitch is at? As a young player, I mean, this is when I get here. This is gonna because a lot of you got a lot of these dudes may not have been getting active but until they got that money or that that mm-hmm. that team on the front of their chest. So when these beautiful women are coming at them, no matter what the age is, it's just like okay. That's why I feel like the the, the league needs vets. You know, mm. I mean, the league don't have yeah. vets no more to help slow these young fellas down and kind of give them talk the game. For them. Talk, man. You know, we've been telling them for a minute. But, I mean, it's <laughs> the dudes. I remember I came in the league and there was dudes that are 38, 39, 40, whether they contributed on the court or not. They were mm. instrumental in the mm-hmm. locker room, on the road, putting their arm around you, teaching you what suits to buy, how to eat, how to, yeah. you know, not what, you know, what to not to blow your money on and, and, and watch out for these hoes over here. And, like, <laughs> they just used to give you, like, real life game. And now, like, oh, wow. the league is so young now that. You know, vets are 32, 33 sometimes, and that's like, you know, that's that's not necessarily a vet. 
back when we came in the game. I feel bad for players, man. They got so much shit attacking them. You, got, you got celebrities. You got the the thoughts. You got yeah. like you got other shit, organized shit. But I mean, if you get to the point to, that you get to play basketball for a living, man, that's a blessing. That's a so blessing, you got to be able to be ready for whatever comes with it. Whose House Podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And between all the working and traveling, I always seem to forget how important it is to recharge my social battery and fit in some alone time. Although I love what I do, it's just finding the right balance that can be difficult at times. But it doesn't have to be hard. Therapy can be a great way to build self-awareness and enjoy a social life that doesn't drain your battery. It's helpful for learning how to set healthy boundaries, managing stress, and strengthening your relationships with both yourself and others. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Getting therapy doesn't have to be hard. BetterHelp is entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Yes, find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash who. I'm going to say it again, and that's W-H-O-O. Visit BetterHelp. Dot com slash who today to get 10% off your first month and that's better help h e l p dot com slash who w h o o see ya what do you what do you think about ball players that want to be rappers after they <laughs> kill themselves i gotta hear this from a, a professional uh, i mean there's some dudes that could do it but a lot of them can't yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of them can, and I, I've always respected music too much to even fuck with it, to be honest with you. Like, I love, I'm a huge fan of music, um, and so I would never disrespect the music game by even attempting to. But I was about to get you to freestyle or something. I know, I'm not going to go. What? Nah, that, that's definitely not me. You know me, who but, shocked me? The other, uh, Kevin Garnett shocked me. He did a record did the other day, right? He did it with, uh, what do you think about that song? You like it? I have not heard this. You didn't hear it? Nah. Nah, he spazzed oh, out yeah. on there. Some dudes can get down, for mm. real. Like, some dudes can get down. Just He's like a, Kevin Durant. Oh, Kevin, I'll say yeah. Kevin Gardner. Oh, yeah. My bad. Durant, Sorry, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad, girl. No, there's a handful of dudes that, 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 that can do both. Um, but for the for the, for the most part, a lot of them can't, and 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 they're the money makers, so their homies can't really tell them nothing. <laughs> like, nah, dude, that ain't it, bro. I mean, uh, me, I told you before, I've been doing radio twenty five years, but I did do Hot Night Seven for like seven years. So back mm-hmm. in those days, Kobe used to send me his freestyles and his songs and Allen Iverson. Mm-hmm. And back then, we used to be like, uh, you know, but we love Shaq- y'all, we love y'all, but that was some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I think they were riding off of the Shaq hype because Shaq mm-hmm. was the first to go platinum, mm-hmm. selling, you know. With, with, with his freestyle, with his mm-hmm. songs and freestyle, and he had records with Biggie that he don't, yeah. he haven't even re- released yet. Yeah. By the way, shout out to Shaq, man. Mm-hmm. a legend in the game. Yeah, but, no, definitely. But you uh, bringing up Kobe, man, yo, you're, you're one of the legends that actually played with like Kobe, Jordan, yeah, man. and LeBron, right? Yeah. Yep. No, I missed MJ by one year, so I played with, against with with and against Kobe, against Bron, mm-hmm. with Shaq, with Allen Iverson, and against Allen Iverson. Um, no, I had a good run. You know, I mean, you mentioned earlier, you know, 15 years I played on seven teams. So, Whew. I mean, some people are like, damn, do you wish you stuck with one? And I'm just like, yeah, but also I got a chance to meet and play mm-hmm. with a lot of Hall of Famers and, and a lot of people that I can call on these days for business because I really felt like my NBA career was just <clears throat> a gateway to what was next. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, and being able to play for – UCLA, Lakers, and Clippers, like now there's no door in LA that doesn't open for me. You know what I mean? And mm, I try to take advantage of that on the business. That's tip, insane. So. Yeah, it is. Yeah. The, the crazy thing about that, I feel like you're the one person that can give an opinion about the debate on Kobe, mm. LeBron, mm. and, and MJ. Cause you, you it's know, a tough you, one. So in, in my... We want to hear your opinion. I know you heard our it opinion don't matter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, what, what's interesting to me is whenever you talk. I mean, everyone thinks because Kobe's passed on that oh, every, you, he's in your top five. Like Kobe was a real life killer, and if you talk to guys that played with and against him, they'll tell you that. But then you talk to sports media, and they may not have for whatever reason. Some mean fuckers don't even have him in the top ten, which is ridiculous. Yeah. But I feel like my wow. top three. My top three are MJ. In, in no real order, I think. I, I actually, I think MJ is one, but no real order after that. I mean, Bron or Kobe right there is two or three. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and, and I had Kobe there, uh, you know, for a long time. But everything LeBron is continuing to do is crazy. Yeah, at his age and the numbers mm. he's still putting up and the records he's breaking and all the records he holds. You know, it's hard to, to, to keep him out of that two slot, and some people have him in the one slot. So, to me, you can throw any of those three up in the air and wherever they land. You know, does he need to do anything else to be number one? Um. 
I mean, obviously, I think another championship wouldn't hurt. But, I mean, if he doesn't get that, I mean, he has all the goddamn records. I yeah. mean, he's number one in scoring and going to be top five in assists and have all these playoff records and all these regular seasons. And just his longevity has ha, has been incredible. So, again, when someone says Braun is number one, I don't fight that. If someone says Jordan is number one, I don't fight that. Mm. And if someone says Kobe is number one, I don't fight that. I feel like those three are the best three that have ever played the game. What era is the best for you? I think Your I era? loved. I know. I, well, I mean, I grew up in the '80s so when yeah. it was real physical, but it was too black and too many drugs. They said <laughs> uh, the '90s is when I really kind of fell in love with Man. the game, with you know the end of Magic and, and Jordan and, mm. and those teams. And I feel like you know '90s to early 2000s, mid 2000s, it was it was popping. When the music, it, everything, the music went with it, and it was a real competitive, physical. You could we could be cool, but we'll fight on the court and be cool after. Like it wasn't no buddy buddy type mm, shit. It yeah. was just real competitive, and you had to be a man to be out there and play. And not that I don't like it today, but I just feel like everyone is friends now, and I, I feel like it lacks competitiveness mm. at times. And and it's more just about scoring, which the league wants. But you know. I want to see someone play some defense and, and really put pride in playing defense. And I want to see people get fouled hard and knocked down to the floor and not these bullshit touch fouls that are being called. So not that I'm hating on the game because I love the game and mm -hmm. understand where it's going to continue and to glow as a, grow as a global game. But just as a competitor, I just wish it was a little bit more competitive. I mean, they, they soften all the sports, even football. You can't, you can't, like, can't touch the quarterback. Nowhere. You can't you touch the quarterback. I think that's the weirdest yeah, shit ever, man. Start wearing flags or skirts or something. <laughs> <laughs> and they, we talk about music back then. That you had Jay Z, DMX, all that craziness, NWA. Now we got, I mean, I'm not, this is sexy red, but imagine, you think a player's bump is sexy I red? I guarantee they are. Some of these what? motherfuckers want to be her, probably. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, doubt it. Uh, you know what I mean? I wouldn't oh doubt no. it. You know, it's <laughs> just like it's it, it's a different, you know, again, and we have to, and I probably, I, I'm thinking probably the old heads were thinking like, what are these motherfuckers listening to? And they're on this. I, I think every generation that gets older kind of looks down like, what are you listening to? Well, that's what you getting hyped to? That's crazy. But I was someone who, I mean, you ask any of my teammates, I always had control though. So I'm Pac before the game. Yeah, Pac, I, feel I was like about nobody, to say that, yeah. yeah, nobody's getting you more hyped than Pac uh, towards the end was Nip. Um, wow. But just always people that was just talking that shit. Um, but, you know, some guys listen to R&B or gospel or, 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 you know, everyone has a different energy when they get ready. Can you imagine back then, you you know, back come out to ski, like, yo, oh, an NBA player. Yeah, they go, ski. <laughs> yo, that's the biggest record out. She's like yeah, number no, she's one. She's tough. Yeah, and yeah. I'm not, like I said, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of necessarily the music, but it, it's not just, it's just not my style. But these people are definitely out here doing their thing. And Kanye West is out there saying he created all the shit. You saw yeah, that today. He sat down what, with what, Big what, Boy. What, what do you think about that? Like he, I mean, I think Kanye is, is, is like an evil genius. Mm. I think there's a lot of truth to what he says, but there's also a lot of bullshit to what he says at times. But um, the fact that he's gone against the grain and said, fuck it, cancel me if you want, and, and, and see what happens. I mean, you see Adidas is still in trouble and, and taking <laughs> a loss for the first time in, 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 in a number of That's years crazy. because of – his influence and, and them not being able to sell his shoes because he told people to stop buying my shoes because mm. they're not paying me for it. So I think, obviously, he gets a bad rap. I think some of the Trump stuff and some of the slavery stuff, There's mm. a, there's been a handful of just outlandish shit he says. But I think for the most part, there's not a ton of, and if, if you're removing the hatred out what he's saying, there's not a ton of, he, he's not lying all the time. Or he's mm. not full of shit all the time. A lot of the stuff he's saying is real shit, but a lot of people don't want to admit it. You think he's like an enabler? Like he just knows how to like bend the matrix by saying certain things. He does it like he's just trolling us. Uh, I think he's kind of making himself the test dummy because mm. I think someone's going to come after it from everything they've learned from all these people and do it better. You know I'm just I mean? surprised he's he's still alive. Like people that like go, go against, against the, the grain, grain are not here yeah. today. You're right. And yeah. I'm talking about they went against the grain the right way. Mm -hmm. Like all the Malcolm X's mm -hmm. and you know, all that. Like they went the right way. Mm -hmm. They ain't OD like that. And they're yeah. not here. He's nah, like ODing. Right. Like, yeah. So I have more power to Kanye, man. Yeah, man. I, you know, I just, you know, it, to me, it changes when you become a father. Mm. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. and, 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 and there's kids, and, and obviously he has children, and, and, and his children are getting older and, 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 and going to see, you know, stuff he says and does. So I just kind of always pray for the best for fathers out there that are you know that that that, that are the leaders and, and and know that their their children and other children are looking up to them you're fashionable Kanye you got to wear his socks or whatever you know he'd be wearing them socks out there no I can't wear socks I'll still wear his shoes <laughs> but I can't yeah I'm you not just, sock I'm not size like pods. 15 they yeah. got 15 yeah. socks yeah. what size is your feet man? 14 15 hey mm -hmm. yeah that's wild I, I can't do it I can't well, wear socks what size is yours Dad? 13 
Oh, <laughs> say nine. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Speaking of drama, man, you got a new show, man. Like uh, uh, you know, you got the family show out there. It's yeah, crazy. Uh, you know the Barnes Bunch. Barnes Bunch comes Shout out, out to Wee TV. Yeah, April 11th on Wee TV. What's um, up, man? Give us the first beef on there. We want uh, the smoke, man. So the, it really, the, the funny part about this show was, I mean, the producers and everybody is great, but the people over Wee TV kind of threw us for a fast one at the beginning because they pitched a family show. The, 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 wholesome. The, the, wholesome. Cool. Yeah. Ups bunch. and downs within a family dynamic. And then they try to turn it into the drama. You know what I mean? So like <laughs> oh, the first shit. the first four or six weeks were just bullshit because they kept trying to make us do shit we weren't going to do. And I just told them, you know, at the end of the day, like, I don't need this money. So I, oh, know, okay, I'm just yeah. not going to do this shit no mm. more. And they're, oh, how can we change? How can we fix? I'm just like, let's get real. You know, let's be, let's be honest. Yeah. You know, let's be honest. Like, you'll, you'll see my girl and I argue just on some regular shit. You don't have to create stupid storylines that aren't going to be real and have us both looking weird. Like, oh, you guys are mad at that or you're arguing about that. Like, no, if we're going to argue, let's argue over some real shit. Exactly. Yeah. There's kid drunk. We got six kids. We got one on the way you know we're, right. we're, we're heading wow. towards yeah we're heading towards a marriage it's just there's just a lot of natural shit i'm busy traveling working getting in trouble getting losing jobs like there's plenty of shit that we could talk about you know without <laughs> yeah, making we heard shit, about that. that without making shit up you know what i mean if we're gonna, we gonna be real let's be real so i, I think it, it took a little bit to get on the same page with the mm -hmm. network but we were able to get on the same page and uh you know hopefully they allow us to put our best foot forward. I can't even balance two kids because both of my sons are totally different. You mm -hmm. got to balance six different six and one on individuals, the way. Yeah, man. six personalities, and you got another personality on the way. Like. Yeah, man, we're five to fifteen. So we, my fiance and I, have a five year old together, and then she has a nine year old son, a ten year old son, and a eleven year old, twelve year old daughter from her previous marriage. Yeah. And then I have the twins from my first marriage. So we're twelve. Or excuse me, we're five to fifteen, and a baby due in September. Yo, I cannot wait to see this show. Are, are you, <laughs> lot, does lot does your head mind. shrink? Is it like, are you like Beetlejuice or something? <laughs> no, nah, I mean it's it just kind of is what it, I mean. I, 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 you know, I get my way through it. You know, it was something my girl wanted to do. Yeah. Um, you know, Jamie Fox brought us the idea, and at Fire, first I was really? like, Nah, I'm cool. And then uh, her, his man Datari, his partner, was good, uh, good friends of my fiance, and and we ended up, you know, making it work. And like I said, they had pitched us one thing. We had an idea of what it was going to be, and when we first went in, it wasn't that. So I'm like, fuck this. And, they, <laughs> you know, they changed it maybe six to eight weeks in, and we kind of started, all right, let's, you know, let's see what we need to get to. What are we trying to get to? Let's be creative on how we get there and what we need to get there and, and, and what we need to do. And, uh, you know, the, the the crew was dope, though. The production crew was dope. You know, shout out OG and Cam and, and JP and the, the rest of the crew. These are people that I'll fuck with until I die and going to hire some of the camera and sound guys for my business now. So cool experience a lot you know it's my second time doing reality tv um we'll see uh how we feel going if if you know hopefully the ratings go well and, mm. and they want a second season but i think that's a decision my girl and i are gonna have to sit down and talk because it, it that shit takes a toll on you man did yeah. they feel me outside like you know he said you got fired while you were sleeping or some shit like, did they, did they <laughs> no, get they, that they, they film no they i mean they film outside you know, outside the house yeah like, then we go outside the house yeah. we got out we did some public things we did some birthday parties mm. uh we had some events so any I rappers mean, came through any celebrities uh, we need to know. who do anybody yeah, I mean, you got some through? homies is Steven yeah, in it? Jamie yeah, Fox? Jackson, Jackson, it, Jamie, no, Jamie wasn't in it. Uh, I think Quick came through a couple times. So. Steven's in there. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, um, there I'm not a, I got homie homies, but like, yeah. it's, I'm just, you know, I just turned 44 this past week and like, it's mm. just different. Like, my circle is super tight and I'm this really not young, outside. man. What's this guy talking about? <laughs> yeah, not just, uh, when I say that, it's not yeah. that I'm old in life, but I mm. just, you know, for 15 years in the league and shit, mm. four years at college at UCLA, like, I ripped and ran and with the best of them. You know what I mean? So I just think at this point in my life, like, it's just best to get out the way and stay out the way and focus on family first and, and, and business and, and my kids. I know it's a reality show, but did you bring acting skills? Because I know you were in uh, the Kevin Hart joint, man. You know? No fucking acting. Like <laughs> think like no, a man. I mean, right. I mean, you got to, I mean, you got to, I mean, like I said, once we kind of figured out what we were trying to do and we got on the same page, you need, there is some act, a little bit of acting you got to throw I mean, in there. You, you, there's, there's ways of, like, understanding cameras is on yeah. you, the way yeah. you got to, like, the etiquette of like moving yeah. and shit. Well, I mean, luckily, I mean, I've you gotta think I've been in front of cameras, and I'm not to sound conceited, but like since I was a teenager, because I was always wow. looking, you know what I mean. So when I first did the basketball wife shit back in 
2010. That was wow, I like forgot about first. this. Yeah, that's crazy. Just, yeah, we kind of helped start with Shaq. How, how, how was Kevin Hart kept working with him, man? He's, he's, Kevin was funny, man. We had <laughs> shit a scene and a half, and that shit took the whole day because he was just laughing and talking shit and being funny, man. So I, 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 I really fuck with Kev. Good <laughs> he's dude. short as fuck with me. No. How short is it with, with you? Yeah, no, he's tiny. He but might be like up to your knees or yeah, something. But he carries that he, 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 he <laughs> yeah. carries that energy, you know. Yeah, what I mean? So he, he always has to have that energy. So working with Kev was uh, you know, that shit was dope. He gets a lot of hate out there because of him being up in the mountain and the acme. Where, I mean, isn't that's it what crazy? happens. You get that from any that's, like that's what happens when you get to the top of the mountain though. You know, mm. arguably the highest paid comic ever, you know, and, and, and making a ton of money and, and having networks and, and, and doing whatever he wants and putting his people on. I mean, that's gonna come with hate. Mm. You know, for, for for no other reason but that, you know, so it's just like it is, uh, uh, you know, a lot is required when you get to the top and he's definitely at the top. Yeah, I know you want to ask him about that fucking uh, the, the firing thing. What's up? Yeah. Well, you talked about getting in trouble uh -huh. um, and staying out of trouble. Uh -huh. uh, it was publicly known that you went to a basketball game. Mm -hmm. And these kids are just disrespectful mm -hmm. to start. These oh, really? kids first these days foremost. are very really? disrespectful oh, first these and days. Foremost. It's like what? it's out of pocket how yeah. much they troll and how the shit that comes out of their mouth. And what? to our uh you know, unbeknownst to us, you were at a basketball game. Just tell us from your side yeah. what happened because the media has a bad habit yeah. of saying you mm. just oh, yeah, went off on this stereotype. Kid. Yeah, yeah, I mean I was at this game, Harvard Westlake <clears throat> versus my kids, School Crespi. And first of all, shout out Crespi, man. They were picked to finish eighth and they finished second in the whole league behind uh, Harvard Westlake. That was a championship game of the league. Mm -hmm. And these refs are bullshit. I think the foul calls were like 23 to 6. So I'm yelling at the refs. And uh, a student who I guess was running a podcast at half court said some shit to me that he shouldn't have said. He shouldn't have said to no adult. Mm -hmm. And when I saw him say it, I simply walked over to him and, and put my hand on his shoulder and asked him who the fuck he thought he was talking to. Right. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm from the 80s, so to me, you act like adult, talk like adult, you get treated like adult. Yep. Um, and people said I went too far because I, it wasn't like I yanked him or mm. grabbed him or threw him or choked him. I literally put my hand on the show like I was yeah. his pops. Yeah. Like, mm. ooh, like, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Yeah. Like that, but you know how that goes. Took it, they took it out of yeah. And you know how that goes. And I mean, again, perception is reality these days. So me and my track record jump to the front of the truth. Yeah. And, I, you know, next thing I know, I'm fighting kids. I'm, I'm seeing that I'm, oh, you're fighting high school kids. You're punching high school kids. I was just like, I didn't really even defend myself either because, like I said, I knew what I did. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I talked to to the network I was working for at the time and told them what the story was. And, you know, they decided to make whatever move they wanted to make. But I'm just not, again, if I'm talking to you disrespectful or yelling at you disrespectful, then bring it back at me. But yeah. I wasn't even talking to this person. I wasn't talking to the mom that flipped me off and said, fuck you, bitch. Like, it was just wild. It was just a yeah. wild night. But all you saw was, you know, you saw a video of me walking over and putting my hand on this kid's shoulder and, yeah. asked, you know, asking him a question. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, again, I think it, it got blown out of uh, proportion because it was me. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I mean, it, if it, I would do the same thing. Like, I just don't do the disrespect. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you said, kids are reckless. Yeah. I'm not going to say what he said. It, it, it doesn't really matter at this point. But I mm -hmm. just feel like, you know, Kids need to understand how to talk to adults, or eighteen-year-olds sure. need to understand how to talk to adults. For sure. At least we got that. We yeah. we, saw, we saw that. That's it. Yeah. For yeah. people that are normal <laughs> out here, we saw yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but I don't know how you guys handle that. Like fans, kids, like you know, being in basketball, you have to sacrifice <sighs> like your dignity by getting cursed out or um, called the worst things ever. I'll be at courtside. I'm like, yeah, they do say some wild. Those things, fans man. be young at LeBron and everybody, yeah. and then and then LeBron be holding it. I see yeah. like Kevin Durant was like, you saw Kevin Durant ran up on somebody yeah, one yeah, time and yeah. stopped. Yeah. How do you guys do that? Like, how, uh, how do y'all hold it's, it? Is? You know, it's it, it's That's tough crazy. at times because I think people think you know you make a lot of money. You're just supposed to be able to you're take whatever. Being. But I mean, could you imagine if someone was coming in here and just cussing at you because you're at Dubai doing soda? Your job, you got hit with water, soda water. You got, you got water, not soda. <laughs> oh. I've got hit with water like someone's throwing like water at me. But it's just like what? you know, you wouldn't want no one coming up on your job and just cussing you out or disrespecting you. You know what I mean? So when people say, "Oh, you should just take it because be the big no, like, nah, motherfucker," you need to know how to act. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't. To me, like I said, I'm just huge on, I respect and I'm cool with everyone, and, you know, until you give me a reason not to. So I'm just very big on, on, on disrespect. And, you know, when the disrespect line is crossed, which is, has happened, not with just me, with, but a lot of players, mm. you know, I just hope that the NBA gets a handle on it because I feel like the NBA protects the fans more than they protect you the players. You should fine them. Anybody should get like, No, not fine. Fines. Just, or just, you know, allow them not to come. Like, you can't handle yourself. If you can't handle the alcohol and you come and you start talking, like, you just can't come back. I mean, it does, if, if, I, if I have a cup of water and I get caught, Video thrown in, I have to pay five thousand 
miles if I hit yeah. an NBA player. I ain't throwing yeah. it in the water. Or yeah. just a lot of shit that you know that if we weren't in this court, you wouldn't say to my face. Yeah. Like, yeah. you just wouldn't say to me if you saw me walking Maybe having a woman curse you out. Oh, it's unbelievable. The women are worse than the it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Let's make it equal here. Yo. That's why I got, I, got, I got girl cousins that can fight, so <laughs> we can make it happen, too. Was it like that in college, too? They were cursing mm. you out in, in college? Say, I, yeah. I, I, I never yeah. really, like, beat that. I just kind of think, like, it's a, and, and to me, I don't mind it. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? To be honest with you, like, I, I get involved. I'll Sometimes I'll cuss back or sometimes I'll talk shit back because that's just kind of the experience of the game. Like, mm-hmm. so I got into, I was going back and forth with Matt. I was going back and forth with KD. Like, to me, that's part of the game. But I feel like sometimes it gets disrespectful and crosses the line. Sometimes it's racist and crosses the line. So it's just like there's no real guidelines to fans. And, and I think the NBA does a poor job of kind of regulating fans and yeah. protecting their players better. I mean, we talked about Steve and, and Metal World earlier. Mm. I, I mean, that one, that that situation yeah. that happened with, in, De- in Detroit was like crazy. Nice. That had to be like the last, like the last of the last. Like they, he sacrificed it all. It's a and, lot, and we because saw it. It like, could it could have been really bad. Yeah, you know what I mean. And 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 the fact that you know the fans are throwing stuff and doing stuff and saying stuff and hitting people with stuff. I mean, that's how people end up getting hurt. You know what I mean. So you know, luckily there wasn't you know any any real real injuries, but. I mean, let that be an example to, you know, what hopefully doesn't have to happen again. We got the last two questions, man, because we got a lot of smoke out of Matt today, man. <laughs> got a lot, man. He likes sexy red. Now we got to get into <laughs> Kobe. Let's get into You want to get into Kobe? You got it. Oh, you want me to get into Kobe? Yeah. All right, okay. Uh, give me a Kobe Bryant practice story. Um, Never heard that one before. I heard he was like... I just, yeah, I mean, just it's 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 you see why he's great. I feel like God gave you know God gave him a lot of God given talent, but I feel like he paid God back every day by how hard he worked. Mm. You know, Kobe was literally when they say first one to lead in, last one like that was him. I mean, he would be there hours before getting the full workout, and sometimes he worked out so much he wouldn't even practice. He would just watch because he got his work in. But when he was out there, it was competitive, and no matter who you were and. If you were a weak leak, he was coming at you. Uh, you know, me and Kobe, once we got together, never had no beef because I was always on the same page as far as, like, practice oh, wow. and games, it's time to go. You know, so we went from kind of competitors and, and nearly fighting to, you know, him recruiting me to the team and us becoming brothers, you know, on and off the court because we were both going through some shit in our personal lives. So we were just kicking it every day, going and do shit together, playing together, and then mm. fast forward, you know, us both retiring and then him coaching his daughter out in the OC and me coaching my twins and we would talk before the weekend, like, when does G play? When does the twins play? And we would, you know, come and watch each other kids game. So, you know, I was just very fortunate to be able to know Kobe the person, you know, not the Mamba. Uh, you know, I got mm. to play against the Mamba, play with the Mamba, but I got to meet Kobe, the man, the father, the businessman, the the, the, the dude that's cool as a fan, talking shit and, and, and kicking it. So um, it was very fortunate and, and obviously, you know, gone too soon. But, you know, to be able to say that I, I saw the, the other side of Kobe and, and, and we were more than just friends, you know, I mean, that was it was it was dope. I mean, we were all affected. I heard you were really down. Like, you were really, like, yeah. out of it. Like, <coughs> it's, who it, wasn't, you know? It's tough. I mean, because, like I said, he was Uncle Cove to the kids, too. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So when I found out, we were actually at my house in the Bay playing in a tournament in the Bay. That Sunday was Championship Sunday, and then the news came through. And I had our whole team at the house and, and, and went up there. And, you know, I see the twins crying because, you know, from three years old, Cove was Uncle Cove. would hug them, hang out with them, give them jerseys every time a shoe yeah, drops. And the daughter, shoes. too, man. The daughter, too, yeah, man. That's so, like, ugh. And sent, you know, sent sent shoes literally two weeks before he passed. You know, our team was wearing, he had just sent the whole team shoes. Our team was wearing a remake of his shoes you oh, know, wow. that day. So it was just like, just a great dude. You know, he did a surprise birthday party for my twins. And I took him mm. out to Orange County and worked him out. And they loved it. He made one of the twins cry. Like, Kobe <laughs> was just a dog at all times. I loved it. So, uh, again, you know, just, just, just bigger than the game, you know, beyond the court. Uh, you know, that was my dog. <laughs> Hey guys, I've tried a lot of hot chicken places in LA, and honestly, Red Chicks has the best chicken out of all of them. Their tenders are crunchy, juicy, with so much flavor, and there's nothing like anything you've ever had before. Nothing. I'm telling you, my favorite item on their menu is the honey butter sandwich. You know, shout out to all the chicks out there, they love that. I don't know what it is about the honey butter sandwich, but they love that. But Stop by their Culver City location today and grab one for yourself like I did. Oh, my God. You can thank me later. Mm, you know what I'm about to do with this? It's crunchy. Mm. <laughs>
One more, man. I you, You've been blessed to play with a lot of great players, mm-hmm. and that's what I love about your career, which mm-hmm. I think helps you transition in the, to business, but mm-hmm. uh, Allen Iverson. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's my boy, man. Allen Iverson. You got to give us cold. You got to give us some I was the first dude I saw smoke backwoods. <laughs> Cause I was coming, I was coming from the, uh, you know, I was coming from a Swisher. We came, we're, we're Swisher land out here in Cali. So I was out in, uh, I got traded with C Webb out to Philly in like oh three oh four, and wow. AI was the first person I ever saw with backwoods. But besides that, man, just heart of a lion, yeah. little mm. dude, yeah. heart of a lion, mm. on and off the court, cool as fuck. Yeah. Um, when it came, you would see him just beat up, big bursts of sacks on his elbows and beat mm. up hips and walking around like an old man, but. You know, when when seven o'clock came around and that popcorn started popping, he was a monster. Yeah. You know, so just to be able to see that night in, night out, and that was a time where I wasn't getting a chance to really play. Yeah. So it was just being a student of the game and watching his every move and and, and watching wow. how he did things and how he moved and how they loved him and hated him at the same time. And mm. I'll tell you one thing, man. I got a chance to play with Kobe, Steph, KD, Shaq. Mm-hmm. I've never seen anyone get more love than Allen Iverson. Yeah. Anywhere, yeah. away, away, away games, in the club, in the strip club, yeah. in the restaurants, uh, anywhere we are at, the people love Allen Iverson. Yeah. And, and that's dope because I know how much he appreciates that. And that was your vet too, so. Yeah, it was OG. Yeah, him and Webb. Well, Webb was like my OG OG, mm. you know what I mean? Because I'm from SAC. Yeah, I used to go up there and work out in the summer times with him, <laughs> and he kind of took me in, and I end up, you know, making the Kings team. and. Yeah. You know, and then he gets traded, and I'm kind of a throw into that trade. So, where was my OG? But early on, being able to be around AI when I first got there, gave me a car for like two months. Like, here, bro, drive this. Like, wow. just super cool. What? So, wow. To this day, me and Chuck still talk. You know what I mean? He'll call me every, you know, we talk probably two or three times a month. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's always, I love you. And how are you doing? Just a real genuine, he's a real good person if you get a chance to mm-hmm. know Chuck. So, yeah. uh, you know trying to get him to do some more stuff and, and make him realize yeah. that the people, the, the world needs him and yes, how much they do. love him and we need to hear him talk. Yes. And, you know, we're starting to get that direction with him, so we're going to keep pushing. So, you know, Alan Iverson definitely was an individual that was affected by situations. Like, if, if he was like, if it was like a clear road for him, he would have been like, I don't know, people were like hating on him because he, the way he played, he had Jordan moments and shit. Well, I just like, think he was just so iconic on and off yeah, the court. I, yeah. mean, I think Relatable. there was no one that was more. I hate to use you using the word culture, but he was just the most cultural defining mm. athlete we maybe we've ever seen. Just for him being him, you know, what I mean, it wasn't like he was doing anything extra. He was just someone that was from the hood that everyone thought like, damn, if he can make it, I can make it. Mm-hmm. He was like the dude, like the, the the homie down the street. You know <laughs> what I mean? And but he just had a lot of game. This one team y'all defeated a lot, the Knicks. Uh, <laughs> I, I want just a, a generic question here. here. This, this, this is a generic <laughs> question, right? This is, can't get any more generic than this. Are we going to see the Knicks win before we die? Yeah, I definitely think so. Like, before I die. I'm like 53. Yeah, I'm, like, yeah. I'm going to die in like I definitely think so. 20 uh, years. I Am I going to see it? I definitely think they're on the right track now. I mean, yeah. I really love Jalen Brunson and what they've been able to add. I feel like they're missing a star, but it, it can't be any star. It has to be a star that could fit in with that, in, into that culture and that system because – Jalen Brunson has done a good job, and Julius Randle and, mm. and the rest of the team and, and, and their owner has finally kind of stepped away because he's yeah. kind of been a, a, a menace to society, and, and people have not gone to the Knicks because of the owner. Oh, wow. With him yeah. kind of, Dolan. you know, announcing that he's kind of stepping back and stepping away, and they got, you know, people like, shout out World Wide West, a lot of a lot of the homies that are over there behind the scenes now, you know, pulling strings and making Ooh. things happen. I really feel like the Knicks, I feel like they're one player away. I wouldn't be surprised. If, I mean, to me, I think they can make it to the conference finals. I don't mm. Know if they can get over that hump and get to the finals, but I really like you know the direction they're headed in, and like I said, I think they're one piece away. I don't want to be on my deathbed and be like, <laughs> like you know, waiting for this shit to happen. I mean, I was there when uh, Ewing, Ewing missed the free uh, kid. Everybody uh, talks about that yeah. missing the free throw. That's mm-hmm. fucked up, man. Mm-hmm. Why is that the first thing people think about when I bring up Ewing? Mm-hmm. It's such a because <laughs> it's just it's you haven't seen the Knicks win in a long time, and I feel like basketball is better when the Knicks are good and the Celtics yeah. are good, yeah. and, and the old tradition the Lakers are good, and obviously they, they got a lot of these other teams that are doing that thing now. But basketball is better when those major teams are good. Man, one last question before we go: You play with a lot of great point guards, Steve Nash, Stephen Curry, Chris Paul. Mm. Baron Davis and Allen Iverson. Ooh, fuck. Who is? <laughs> let's let that sink in for a second. But who is who is the number one point guard out of that group? Mm, that's hard. And we're talking healthy Baron Davis. Yeah, I know. Oh no, wow. People don't know how good a healthy Baron Davis. He was is. a beast. Um, 
I take Steph and AI out because I only played with Steph for a half a season, mm -hmm. and I really didn't get to play when I was in Philly. So huge fans of them. But with guys I play with, for, with, with, with Nash, CP, <sighs> BD, um, fuck. <laughs> Crazy. I put probably CP one and BD two and maybe Steve Nash three. Really? That's a little crunchy right there. Mm -hmm. right? Steve Nash was MVP. Yeah, he Steve Nash was great, but I don't feel like he was better than either one of those two guys. Really? Uh, -uh. I don't. And a healthy Baron Davis was could have been a top five point guard ever. Yeah. Wow. In my For opinion, sure. For sure. Uh, if he was healthy, the way he played both sides of the ball, had no holes in his game, uh, could guard bigger players. No one can check him. Stronger boost, yeah. mid range game, post up game, pass, shoot three. Like there wasn't a hole in Barron's game. He just his body couldn't handle yeah. mm. the, the 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 grind. But as far as skill set, Barron was incredible. Yeah. You on Eminem's channel, man? Is, is there any Eminem's history in in Martin and Matt? Barnes, I'm a big or, fan of him. You, you know, know, to be honest with Dr. you, Dre and, just and I just saw, I was about to say, <coughs> yeah, Doctor Dre just said that there's not a better MC mm. out there, like ever, ever. Uh, I don't know if I agree with all that, but I mean that comes from the dot. You know what I mean. Mm. So you got to respect it. I'm, you know, pocket, pocket big, or you know, my goats. But you know, they didn't really have the the, the span. I, I would say guys that have span. I mean, Jay Z is up there for me. Uh, mm. I like I like older Ye. Um, <laughs> I mean, Same. the old Ye. <laughs> Kanye first came on the scene. He was absolutely. I mean, mm. it's crazy that he kind of turned into everything he rapped about not wanting to be when he started. Mm. You know what I mean, he kind of turned into a lot of the things he said he didn't want to be and did, didn't want to do. Um, but yeah, I mean that I'm a you know Scarface, Fab, Jada Kiss, right Snoop, Jeezy, right you know Rick Ross. I mean I'm a I'm a old I'm a '90s early 2000 mm. hip hop dude. Like again, this new music to each his own. You know they're definitely doing their thing, but it's just not really mine. My cup of tea. That's good. I mean, it's normal. You know, we got our kids to worry about yeah, that. Yeah, you know? our kids love it. <laughs> <laughs> Do they get to some sexy red? No. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right, we out of here. Uh, white boy, take us away. <laughs> <laughs> Just crazy.